Hello everyone. I'm going to present you a neat question and concept series. In this video, we'll see a couple of neat questions and answer to those questions. So we'll try to understand the concepts behind those questions. The first question is, which of the following glucose transporter is insulin dependent? GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3 or GLUT4? The answer is GLUT4. Let's look at the concept. Typically, in the GLUT4, the kind of a transporter which helps the transportation of a glucose which is extracellular in the bloodstream into the cell, that is the cytoplasm. This remains inside the cell, that is called cytoplasm. Whenever insulin is present, it gets transferred to the transmembrane. A transaction of glucose can now happen from outside to inside of the cell. Question number two. All of the following are the part of operon except enhancer, structural gene, an operator or promoter. The answer is enhancer. If you look at the concept of an operon, operon is nothing but a string of genes, a set of genes arranged one after another. They are either on or they are either off. This is a regulatory element that means that regulates the either it's switched on or switched off. For example, in below images, it's showing green, that means all genes are on. It's showing the red, that means all genes are off. And this is a regulatory element. Depending on the binding of certain proteins to those elements, it depends on it will be on or off. So, if you consider an operon, there is no enhancer as such. We have structural genes, we have a promoter, we have operator, there is no enhancer as such. Next question. So we have given a sequence and this is a DNA sequence. If you convert it into RNA, what it would be? So if you look at the first answer, all T's are converted into U. Second answer, some of the T's are converted into U. Third answer is the same case. The answer is all T's are converted into U. Let's look at the concept. If you see the DNA, it is made up of 8 GC and RNA, where the T is getting replaced with the U. Basically, both are. So, this is a chemical reaction that converts T into U. However, when you look at the um, RNA and DNA, the fundamental differences between RNA and DNA is T is replaced with U, uridine. Which of the following gastric cells indirectly help in erythropoiesis? So erythropoiesis is a process of red blood cell formation. Answer 1, O blood cells. Second, mucus cells. Third, chief cells or parietal cells. The answer is parietal cells. Let's look at the concept. So, it started from parietal cells. Parietal cells secrete from something called GIF. That's not the same GIF yet you use. But this GIF is gastric intrinsic factor. That means it's some sort of intrinsic nature. And gastric is secreted from the gastric cells. So, it's called a gastric intrinsic factor that helps in absorption of vitamin B12. Generally, vitamin B12 is not readily absorb into the bloodstream. You are taking it from the food but it is not getting absorbed. However, if its GIF is present, the BB12 get absorbed into your blood and then it is made available for this process. This process is called erythropoiesis process. So in your bone marrow, there is something called erythroblast exists. Erythroblast is some sort of, we can call it a stage. What we call a standard one, second, third and fourth. It is simply like that. So erythroblasts will convert into erythrocytes and for this process we need vitamin B12 in ample quantity. Next question, which of the following is not an autoimmune disease? Let's look carefully. 
Alzheimer, rheumatoid, psoriasis or vitiligo? The answer is Alzheimer's. Now let's have a look at the cancer. So what is an autoimmune disease? Where immune system attacks its own cells. How immune system attacks? It creates an antibody against its own cells or it has cytotoxic T cells that are acting against its own cells. In general, the immune systems act against own cells. So if you look at the rheumatoid arthritis, typically a joint disorder where the joint cells, joint tissues being attacked by the immune cells. So yes, it's immune cells. Typically, you can see the red color patches on the skin of these persons who are suffering from this disease. The skin cells are getting attached. Vitiligo, where we can see white patches on person's face, uh, those who are suffering from vitiligo, where particularly the cells that synthesize melanin are getting attacked. That's called melanocytes. So these are typically the examples of autoimmune disorders, autoimmune diseases. Now, let's look at the Alzheimer's. In the context where we are not looking at Alzheimer's as an autoimmune disease, however, scientists have thought that it is an image of autoimmune disorder. So, you can look at the latest papers available on PubMed and see, increase your knowledge, increase your gyan and see there is a latest element. So, whatever today is there in the question paper may not be relevant tomorrow. The reason is science getting advanced day by day and to be updated with things. Thanks for watching. We'll bring most question and answer series in the next subsequent series. Yeah. Thank you. Please subscribe to the channel.